Hi everyone, this is Adrian. Welcome to Wild Bush and Grit. Today we're making sausages. Oh yeah, sausages. It's very easy. There is nothing complicated to it. If you're processing your own meat, you realize that at the end you're, you know, you're ending inevitably with a burger pile where this is all your ground, you know, where all your ground meat will come from. So you, you've done your roast, you've done your steaks, and all those trimming, all these little bits and pieces, you gather them into a pile, right? Like this pile here, this is my trimming pile. Today what I'm gonna try is three different types of, uh, of recipe for sausage. So first one is apple and cheddar. So I have here four apples from my yard and they're quite ripe. And I have aged cheddar, so this is a five-year-old cheddar. The second recipe I wanna do is mushroom, you know, that old classic. And this is a mix of sep in French, uh, well, in French we say sep in English. I will assume it's being called sep also. And bolet. So, bol in, again, in French it's bolet, but in English it might be bolet, bolet. I don't know. I don't know how you guys are saying it. <laughs> English warrior, are you so hard on me? And the next thing here, the next recipe I want to try is sus um, sausages with sage, you know, fine herbs, sage, garlic, and some tarragon. All right, so now what I'd like to do with my pure deer meat is to add a little bit of pork in it. So what I'm, the, uh, my um, ratio is 66% deer, 33% pork. And this is shoulder, so it's a little bit fatter than the, um, the, 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 the leg. I prefer fatter and I will add even you know, more fat. So this is fat back from the pork and it's salted. So later we'll see you know, how, how much salt we need to add because this, can, you know, this comes really uh, you know, with a, a good amount of salt in them. The other thing that definitely you'll need to make sausages is the sausage casing. So the casing, you can ask your local butcher, tell your butcher how much um, meat in total you have and he'll be able to tell you how much length, how long of a, you know, you need. If you can't get your hand on sausage casing, then you can, you know, when you harvest your deer, when you're field dressing it, you can try to preserve the cow. The cow, and this is uh, the membrane that that's around the stomach area and the intestine. So when you're field dressing, be careful not to puncture anything in the um, in the abdomen area. And you can carefully remove this. And once you have your ground uh, deer with the meat and everything seasoned, you can wrap the meat inside of this. And you'll make some like patty. And this is delicious. See how fatty this is? This is gonna release wonderful flavor in your uh, in your dishes. So, and I'll, I'll show you how, how I process this later. We, we're gonna clean that really well before we're actually doing our patties. Fun fact about the cow, in French it's called crépinette. It's a very nice word, don't you think? Crépinette? All right, so that's the cow, crépinette. This is the pork intestine, the sausage casing, intestin in French. Some pork shoulder, extra fat, salt lard, and I have my three, um, you know, three groups from different recipes that I want to try. So, tarragon and sage, garlic. Here it's only mushroom, so it's sip and sep and bolet, bolet, whatever. And apples, cheddar, aged cheddar, my new, and my deer meat. All right, so let's get cooking. First, I will grind the the stuffing the pork, the deer, and the fat, and the, uh, in this case it's going to be the mushroom. I'll throw all this into the grinder. Once all this has been grinded, then I will force that meat through the casing. So it's like one step grind, and then after it's like stuffing the casing. So in this case, we're gonna start with the mushroom. It's before you actually do this, make sure your mushrooms are clean, no sands, nothing in them. Otherwise, it's gonna suck. Having like a sand, grain of sands while you're chewing on the sausage, not good at all. So I need this push for me. So I'll just turn on. I'll just turn on. Yeah, you know, you you don't want it to go too fast. 
and I'll start throwing pieces on the top here and I will force them you know, forcing them into the grinder I'll add a bit of fat, some pork my ingredients are not pre-mixed so what I'm doing is I'll put a little bit of deer uh, I'll push some pork, I'll put some fat uh, I'll add, whoop, I'll add some, uh, some, a bit of mushroom and the mixing will happen later. Will happen later here in, in the bowl. But where we, you know, we'll season them. We'll add salt. You can add a little bit of pepper. Tough work. Tough job. Uh, just kidding. I have this much right now. I'm going to mix it thoroughly. Not too much, but you know, just just enough so everything kind of mix as well together and I'm gonna add some salt and how much salt do you add so this always puzzle me and even until today I will usually eyeball it but I have one tip is I'll just make a little patty and I will cook it and then I will taste it and make sure you know we have we're pretty balanced on the on the salt on the salt side I also add a little bit of pepper I don't want to add too much thing because this is you know wild mushroom I want to maintain those flavor as much as possible so the I don't want anything else to come in and overpower the, uh, the taste of the wild mushroom. So, salt. For a batch like this, my wild guess here is about, hmm, I would say, maybe two, two spoons of salt for now. Let's start with this. And I will sprinkle one. Mix it without making a mess, if possible. All right, so that's, that's good. And I'm gonna add another one. And I'm really gonna mix it. Well, you know, you can go in and use your hand here. I can smell those mushrooms coming through. Really nice. All right, so this is thoroughly mixed, and now what I'm going to do is a little patty with the spoon here that I'm gonna put on my cast iron pan, which has been already heating. So let's go. So let's cook this patty, and then we'll have a a taste of the salt level, see how, how good we're faring here. And let's have a taste. So first, of course, it needs to be thoroughly cooked, which is good. The juices are clear, no red, nothing. And I think the salt is perfect, so that's exactly how I like it. We're ready to push the meat through the sausage casing. Uh, here you see I added the, uh, the accessory here that will allow me to receive the sausage casing actually. So to begin, what we need to do is to find the opening, the, the entrance of the casing and put it on top just like that. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. And you do this. Release some of it here and be very gentle, you don't want to break it. And you continue So you want to do this in one go as much as possible, so you need to put as much as possible casing on top here on the tube accessories. Some of you are laughing right now.
Come on, how old are you? So I think I'll start with this. I'll give myself a little extra room here. And you don't want to tighten it up right away. What you want to do is start pushing your mitt through it. <laughs> and then once all the air has been purged from the, the, the system, now you can make a nut and make your actual sausage. So and what I'll start doing is I'll start putting mint on the tray on top. It's off camera right now, but trust me, that, that's what I'm doing. And I'll start pushing the meat inside. So you see, as I'm pushing... <laughs> Uh, house briefs, graceful it is. As I'm pushing the mid, it's actually slipping away from. So, and that's because right now the air is unable to move through. Okay. Now, as I'm pushing the mid, you see there are some air coming down, right? And we need to purge that air before actually making our sausage. So, first, I'm gonna stuff the top tray. Sure, I can you know, push it as much as possible from the upper. Now I'm gonna turn on the engine. And quickly, I need to make sure that I have enough stuffing on the tray here at all times because you don't want any air to be trapped inside your inside the system. yourself enough room like so now you can tie a knot now you start pushing so you see as you push the meat will start coming out of the tube slowly and you can hold the casing if you want your sausage to be plumper. Hold the casing a little to force a little bit more meat. So this is how you can kind of um, gauge the size that you want. That's it, it took me a while to, uh, to push all the meat for this first, uh, for, for this first batch. Now we're ready to uh, actually make, you know, shape the sausage into what we, uh, we need them. So the length is based on your preference. You can make small one, you can make larger one, you can make long one. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take one large like this and I will just coil up and I will use this one, you know, when I have like big gathering or like you know, when I'm making a party and I'll just like keep this one uh, where, you know, where I'll keep it just 
side. So let's say this one is, is done. So what I'll do is maybe I'm gonna keep six, seven inches and I'll pinch and I'll pinch the the meat until I get to a, until it's flattened and then I'll twist it in one direction. Maybe five, six turn. And that's that's the size that I will usually go. Now what I'll do is now I, I know which direction I twist this one. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use this first sausage as a base to get to the next one where I'll pinch the meat again and then I'll twist in the other direction. Just like so. And then you get to the next one. Then you pinch and then we went forward and now we'll go backward. Or did I was it the opposite? Whatever. So you go forward once, back backward the other one, the, the other the next time. So this, we just went backward, so now I'll go forward a few turns. So, it, you know, maybe five, six turns is enough. And then a gauge. So we went forward, now we go backward. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll just keep on going like this one. Let me pull it out so it's actually easier. And now I'm fighting the, the whole... speaking a much faster and I get this one yeah maybe I'll make two of this so it's not exact science and you get your nice roll of sausage this is how I make sausage folks fairly easy trust me I don't, this one is a bit dirtier, so I don't think I'm gonna use that one, but at least this one is clean, and I started actually cleaning it a little bit more. So what I have here is lukewarm water and a little bit of salt to get rid of the blood. So right now what I'm gonna do is continue rinsing, rinsing this one off, so the water, at least it's clean and not, uh, not bloody as it is. All right. All right, Crepinette is mostly you know almost clean now so now I'm gonna start using it all right let's try this all right so I have my patty here that I'm gonna form like this now what I need to find in my cowl my crepinette is just a wee bit just enough so I can wrap Wrap it in. And you cut it. And what you want is you just want to cover. The patsy overall. Like this. So you can work all your patty like that. You can, after, uh, seal them and freeze them as is and after you can you know, you can throw them as is on the grill or uh, in your pan or whatever this is great for breakfast so you can make different size small large whatever you need and another type of sausage you know it's technically not a sausage but it's almost the same thing well that was the bonus tip for today and you know what's the best part of this is there's no mystery meat in that you know exactly where it comes from see ya